Hey, welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be on me building the navigation bar here you see in what's gonna be the next version of my personal blog. This is done with Tailwind and it's actually using something called Meraki UI. I probably butchered that name, but this is really interesting. Uh, it's basically a set of pre-built components with Tailwind that make getting started really, really easy. And I've just taken a navigation bar from here and tweaked it to what I need. So I'll show you how I build stuff with this and it's really, really easy. The next videos are actually gonna be about me building this and then the post section and then the footer, which again are taken from this set of UI components. So uh, this is the starting point. Nothing there. The file is completely empty apart from a Tailwind import, an Alpine import, and just a, a font from Google called Carla, which we're applying to everything within the body. And before I get started, I just want to mention if you find this information useful, if you're learning stuff, please do consider subscribing. It really helps out. I've also left a link in the description to cloudways.com. It's where I host all my Laravel projects and actually certain WordPress websites. They're fast, secure, very easy to deploy. And if you're new or if you're not looking forward to spending a lot of time getting stuff deployed to these more complex systems, Cloudways is great. Anyways, to start, Basically, we have a body set up and that's pretty much it. Just the background is gray and it uses that font. You can see the page is empty. So the first thing we have to do is actually just create a nav element, give it a class. That's fine. We're gonna give it a background of white, uh, a shadow and a margin bottom of 10. So as you can see in the final version, it's full width white and it's got a margin bottom of 10 here that separates it from the next element. I like to use margin bottom instead of margin top on the next element, but that's just me. We refresh, nothing happens because there's not actually anything within this nav bar, but if I put some text in it, you can see that it's there. Next, we have to create a div element because what we wanna do is, is center the content within the nav bar within a, like a max width, in this case of 3XL, that's predefined in Tailwind. I don't want it to be full width because that looks weird in my opinion. And for a personal blog, I need it to be aligned with the width of all the other content, which you can see is done perfectly here. This is something that I had to tweak from the component set from Meraki. And I'll show you how to, how to do that. So I set max width of 3XL, give it an MX auto so it's centered. And if I close this up and put something inside, you'll see that it is centered. There is gonna be space here and there. Within here, I need another diff. But before I actually do that, I'm gonna add some padding. So I want uh, padding top and bottom of three. I want padding left and right of six, but only for mobile. And since Tailwind is mobile first, it's gonna interpret this as the style for everything, unless we include a, a medium breakpoint and set it to something else, in this case, zero. Now the reason for this is because on a mobile browser, I need a little bit of padding on left, right, parts of the navigation bar so that there's, they're not touching the corners, the edges of the screen. On the desktop version, there should be space left anyways because browsers are quite wide on the computer, so I don't need that padding there. Continuing on, we also want this to be flex. If we're using something that's past the medium breakpoint, we also want justify between, and we also want items centered so they're centered vertically. And I've got some Alpine stuff that I'll need to include, but we can get to that after. For now, we just need to know that if I put test in here, it looks something like that. I'm actually zoomed in. If we go to 100%, that's what it looks like, which is pretty close to the final product. The final product has a little bit greater height because of the image here, but it looks pretty close already. So let's continue on. Next, I need another div here, like another container. We'll give this a class of flex, justify between and items center. Justify between is gonna push the elements within this div to opposite ends of the container on the left and the right. And this is really useful because in the final product, well, in the mobile version, there's gonna be like a hamburger menu. And here, there's obviously the name and, and the icon. So they need to be on separate ends. Within here, we're gonna need two div containers. So div class, and this one to start is gonna be, this one to start is just gonna use flex and item center and within here we're going to have the image uh, and i'm going to give it a class and it should have an alt but for this for the purpose of this tutorial i'm just going to leave that blank the source is going to be just an image pulled from my current blog it's just a picture of me actually and the classes that we're going to use are height of eight a shadow rounded full so it actually becomes circular completely and if we refresh 
we see that the icon is there, which is great. And it does actually, if you zoom in, it will have like a very slight shadow you can see. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do is actually add the text. So I'm going to make an A tag with an href and I'm going to link it to nothing for now. And for now in here, I'm going to put my name, refresh, my name is there. And the reason my name is beside there is because we're using flex up here and then item center centers them vertically. So even though the image is actually taller, the text is right in the middle, which is exactly what we want. In terms of classes, for starters, I'm just going to add a margin left of four to space this out a little bit. And in here, I'm going to put text gray 800, text Excel, hover, text gray 700. Just give it a little bit of an effect when we hover over, and this should be Excel. So when we hover, you can see a little bit of an effect. Let me zoom in. Yep, just ever so slightly, which is cool. And so this part's actually done. What we have here now is going to be the mobile mobile menu button. And so what I need to do in here is make this flex. And when we're over the medium breakpoint, it's going to be hidden. We don't want to see a hamburger menu if we are over that breakpoint. In here is going to be a button. And it's going to be a type button. We're going to give it a class. And within here, we're going to make it text gray 500, hover text gray 600 on focus there's going to be no outline and that's just something to typically do with hamburger menus because the browser is going to make some uh, ugly outline around on focus and you don't want that and also on focus we want the text to be gray 600 and just for completeness sake we also want to add an aria label which in this case would be toggle menu within here there's going to be an svg but i don't want to type an svg out so i'm just going to copy it over Okay, we got our SVG, as you can see here. And if we now go to the browser and refresh, nothing will have changed, but if we inspect and go into a mobile view, you can see we have a hamburger menu. There it is. So it's a little bit too light, but that's very easy to, to change. I'd like to move on to the bottom of the menu now and actually making it work, because when this clicks, I want that menu to actually show up. So how do we do that? Well, first we actually need to build the menu because for now we just have basically like a label where my name is and the icon is and also that hamburger menu. So if we go down here and we could just label this menu if mobile set to hidden. And what we're gonna do here is just create a div with a class and this class should have MD flex item center and in here this is another div within it. And I'll explain this as I go. But this should also be flex and flex column because we want everything within this container to be stacked instead of uh, side by side. But unless it's on um, a desktop view, then we want it to be flex row. So it's side by side. Like I said, Tailwind is mobile first, so it's going to interpret the flex column first. But if it finds a medium breakpoint class being used, it's going to set that one when that breakpoint is reached. And also on, on the desktop version, we want a margin left of six. And so if we close this up, we can go and put links actually in it. So we can make an A class and set this to uh, margin top and bottom of one, text SM, text gray 700, font medium, hover, text indigo, which is cool, 500. And on uh, medium and above, we're gonna add a left right margin of four. And on medium, we're going to add a margin of top and bottom of zero. And this will make sense in a second. And we just need an href. And for now, it's gonna link nowhere. We can close this tag up. And in this one, I'll, I'll name them after I copy them. So we need three. This one we can make home. We can make this one about. And this one can be contact. If I save this and refresh, you can see that this actually doesn't work because we don't have any Alpine being used to, to toggle that in on and off. But in the desktop view, it looks great. It, it's a little bit different than what I have here because I only have two menu items. But if I zoom out, it looks pretty much identical. So how do we make the mobile menu work? Well, that's what Alpine comes in for. If you're unfamiliar with Alpine, Alpine is just makes it really easy to go into your HTML and make things reactive. All you have to do is basically define an X data on your outermost container and in this case I'll just put it here so it's easier to see 
and in here there's a JSON format. And in here, all I want to track is, is open. And by default, is open should be false. What triggers this to be true? Well, when this button's clicked, and we can use at click and just trigger is open because this element is within this container, so now this X data is available to it. We can trigger is open to be equal to true, right? Well, this actually will work the first time if we set the element to be closed below it by default, but it will not work when we try to close it again. So what we need to do is just set it to the inverse of what it is. So if it's if it's true, set it to false. If it's false, set it to true. And if we click this, it'll do exactly that. It'll, it'll do this with the hamburger menu. This part is actually pretty easy. We can just use x show if is open. If we refresh and click here, it works and it works great. I'd add a little bit of padding here. In this case, actually, I'd add a little bit of margin. Let's say margin four. Let's see if that looks better. Sure does. If we go back to the regular one now, we can see that we have another problem. Now this has disappeared. So what's the solution here? So the solution I've come up with to fix this issue where uh, this is not showing up at all on desktop, but it is for mobile, is to actually just make this uh, show up block when we're on the desktop and remove this X show and use, I guess what's called a class binding. I'm not sure what the technical name is with just a JavaScript ter ternary in here. It's going to check if is open is true. And if it is, we're going to use the tailwind show class. And if it's not, we're going to use the tailwind hidden class. And if we refresh now, we see that our menu comes up, but with weird padding, if we go to mobile and we zoom in just a little bit, we can see that our menu does actually work clicks and everything. We can close it, but we do have that issue with the padding. So this just goes back to Tailwind being mobile first. Let me zoom in so we can see what's happening clearly. It has that padding at the top that I added earlier, but we don't want it on desktop. And we can see that that's being added here. So what we want to do is just let this MT4 default for mobile. When we reach the MD breakpoint, we can add a margin top of zero. And now it's back to normal. So if I go to inspect and we go to mobile, and we click here, you can see that it's still here, it's spaced nicely, and that is basically it. So if you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. I'll be making more as I go down and basically create this whole thing through a series. I've also created a video that goes through using the Laravel Wink package to create a blog very easily. It's faceless, so you have to create the front end yourself. But with Tailwind and, and these tutorials, I'm very confident that you can build it very easily, and it, it's a great project to add the, to the portfolio. Again, I've left a link to cloudways.com below. If you want to support the channel and if you're looking for somewhere to easily deploy your projects to, I would definitely take a look there. They're affordable, very easy to deploy to, secure. They've got a ton of features and I probably will end up making a video about deploying there at some point. And the last thing I just want to mention is that these components do come from MerakiUI.com. I'll also include that below. They make it very easy to get started and you just have to tweak to basically fit your use case. Uh, and this is a great resource. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.